for the whole fight and you want to do some nice cheesy damage, you're not going to be obliterating in that fight. So swap your Icy Touch with your Obliterate. Happy days. And it's just going to increase your Frost Fever 20% damage. Okay? It's a bit of a cheese. It's there if you want it. Why have you taken Glyph of Pestilence Breach? We don't use Pestilence as a, uh, a Frost Death Knight, so why have you done it? Uh, it buffs your Plague Strike damage. And we do Plague Strike every 32 seconds or so. So it, it's a free buff to damage. It's a bug. But bear in mind, that is a bug and could be changed any time. But as it stands, Glyph of Pestilence actually buffs your Plague Strike damage. The only other important ones, Glyph of Anti-Magic Shell. Brilliant cooldown to use. There's magic damage in every single fight, so the longer that lasts, the better. We've taken Glyph of Blood Saps, because we're going to Blood Sap every minute. It's not going to cause damage to us. Horn of Winter, the buff lasts an extra minute. Remember, Horn of Winter is actually a DPS cooldown. It generates runic power. So we're going to be Horn of Wintering on cooldown anyway. But should anything happen, it's going to last an extra minute. And Path of Frost. Path of Frost allows us to fall from a great distance without taking damage. There are some mechanics where you get thrown in the air or you might fall off something. It's just there if you need it. You're not going to take as much damage. Might save your life one day. If it saves our life one day, that one day is enough to warrant a Glyph. And Glyph of Hunger and Cold in the Mages just cost no runic power. We very, very rarely use it. These are your primes. These are the ones that are really important. The rest of them are just little nice additions. Okay? So that's it for our overview of our character okay we've looked at reforging we've looked at gemming we've looked at some basic enchants again it's a high level character but all the rules remain the same we've looked at our talents we've looked at our glyphs we're ready to go let's have a quick overview like i said i'm not going to do a heroic run this is what you should be doing in your run okay first let's look at our aoe our kings of aoe are frost death knights they never have to stop never run out of mana there's none of that to worry about so how do we start our aoe so we'll look at these four mobs here in our dungeon. We're going to drop our Death and Decay first. Why are we doing that? Death and Decay is not brilliant for Frost Death Knight. Well, it's still a heavy AoE spell. And while that's ticking, it gives our tank that extra second to get aggro on the mobs. Because Frost Death Knights are putting out huge threat on AoE packs. Okay, really, really stupid threat. So what we've managed to do is waste one global on a spell we're going to use anyway. Okay. Letting the tank get some aggro. A little bit of a forethought beforehand. So we've put down our Death and Decay. Now I'm going to take this very slowly so I can talk you through it. So this is, And you're going to be doing this very quickly. We then pick a target. Say this one. We start attacking. We we'll see our Rune of Razor Eye start stacking. So how do we start here wing? Well, we've got Howling Blast. So spam your Howling Blast. Very easy. Until all your runes are on cooldown. Now we generate some runics. So what we're going to do... Remember, our Frost Strike is buffed by bamming both of these. So we've got two Unholy Runes off cooldown. We're going to use our Unholy Rune to bl uh, Plague Strike, get our Blood Plague on. Then we're going to spam our Frost Strike. And that's going to generate all our runes back again. Do you see the rotation we're doing? So we're Howling Blasting. Like this. Very easy. And then we're going to Frost Strike. And watch the rune bar. You should have some procs. If we're lucky, yeah, you see one proc there, two procs. Regenerates all our runes for us. So we can then Howling Blast again. And then we're going to... Frost Strike and try and get some runes back. There we go. We've got one extra rune out of those. And this is it. This is all the spec. This is how you AoE. You're not pestilencing. It's not worth it. That pestilence is not going to equal as much damage as another Howling Blast. And all we do is we rotate this way. When it falls off again, we'll strike it back. Now, to man manage your threat, like I say, you don't want to be pulling aggro in dungeons, is when you're going to swap and you've got these unholy runes ready, swap to a new target. Plague Strike that, that's still going to mean you've got two targets ticking with disease, so it's more damage anyway. And now you're spreading your threat amongst the mobs. Okay, two things to be bearing in mind. What I do is keep Death and Decay somewhere where you can see it, because every unholy when you've got it off cooldown every 30 seconds, keep it going. Very easy. What I'd be careful of is popping your Pillar of Frost, especially against a newer tank or somebody who might be struggling, because it's going to boost your damage by a lot when you're AoEing. A hell of a lot. If you're comfortable with your tank... Pop your Pillar of Frost at the start and get the DPS going. For single target, very easy. Let's come up to our little dummy. Let's walk up neatly because we're Orc Brothers. Me and this guy gives me a quick cheer. Here's our mob. So we come up to our boss. What we're pressing first. First of all, as always, is Outbreak. Get our diseases on. Boom. We're ready to go. How do we pull? I'd, this is how I prefer to pull, especially if you've got some runic power built up already. Is to do two obliterates. That gives the, the That's not big, hard-hitting super obliterates, okay? Those are nice, gentle, warm-up obliterates while your tank gets aggro. Now the tank should have some aggro, and you should have two runes left. 
pop your pillar, preferably macro in. I'll show you the macros in a second, so get your ghoul up. Blood tap the rune back, and then follow it up with obliterate, unless you're capped on runic power, like I am. And then start frost striking, okay? Make sure your diseases are always up. And that should proc all your runes back, and then keep the obliterates going. Very easy. And as soon as you can obliterate, do it. And then frost strike in between to get more runes back. Every time you can obliterate, you should be. Very easy. And as you see, I'm already running out of resources here. You see, I've either got any root power. But you can keep this spec going. And this is where you come into these dry periods, okay? So you're trying to manage that so you're not wasting any procs. That's the whole aspect of the, ta the, the spec. It's really just to manage those. Uh, Blood Plague runs out, but our Outbreak is back off cooldown. So we're Outbreak it back. We've not wasted any runes. This is how low we we're going to use Plague Strike. Nothing special. Very easy. Okay. And that's our single target rotation. And use Pillar Frost every pillar's back. We use Pillar up. We've fired it all off. Very easy. Blood Sap it back up. Boom. Okay. And that's your single target. That's all it is for a Frost Death Knight. It's just managing your runic power and your runes. If you can obliterate, and that obliterate... These are rules, okay? If you can obliterate, that obliterate won't cause you to cap runic power, and you haven't got a rhyme proc already, then you obliterate. If you can obliterate, but you've got a rhyme proc, which is your free howling blast, use your howling blast first, and if the next attack you do will cause you to cap your runic power, frost strike first. Because you don't want to waste resources, okay? You don't want to be wasting resources. If capping runic power is very bad. We don't want to do that. Final aspect of the quick overview. I say quick. We've probably been chatting for a very, very long time. But never mind. Macros. A lot of macros here. Don't worry too much about them. These are for, uh, mixed up for tanking and so on. One here. A basic one. Slash start attack slash cast howling blast. That means I never have to right click ever again. If I howling blast my target when I run to it, I'm already doing my attacks. I have two types of interrupt macro, similar to the rogue one. Nothing different there that we did with the tricks of the trade macro. A focus interrupt. I'll put all these in the comments for you guys. Uh, it interrupts my focus um, focus target. And it whispers somebody, in this case Darksend, and then says in local chat that I've interrupted and Darksend is next. He's one of our rogues in our guild. Similar to just a normal interrupt macro, just cast mind freeze. I whisper somebody and tell them I've kicked, and I say he's and he's local that I've kicked, and that person is next. Very easy. The more important one for you guys going into it is your pillar of frost cooldown. I'm an engineer, so I have slash use ten there. Now, anybody who saw our road guide, as we said, every one of your slots has a number assigned to it by Blizzard, so you don't have, ever have to worry about using uh changing the names of the items in your macros so 10 is your glove slots and 13 and 14 are trinket slots so if you have an unused trinket you'll probably want slash use 13 or 14 whatever it might be what do we want to line up with pillar of frost well pillar of frost is very very important uh to gives you that 20 strength 20 percent strength boost so we want every bonus we can get on top of that because remember when you're using your cooldowns you don't want to use cooldowns all like spread out you want the big boost because they all modify each other so we want to use number 10 which is for engineers it's synapse springs uh, if you're not an engineer don't worry about slash use 10 you don't need it that boosts our strength by 480 so i've had a 480 strength boost i've used my blood fury which is my racial at the same time i've also used pillar of frost which is then boost another 20 percent strength on my strength from gear my strength from any procs like you see that gives me 2000 strength and i've then used the, my gloves which are going to be another 480 i've then boosted that by 20 percent and then i've used raise dead now raise dead is a dps cooldown you want to get your ghoul up now your ghoul benefits from your strength when it's up so by blowing all them together and then using raise dead i've got a nice big strong ghoul ready to go okay with all the maximum buffs i can give that guy so if you've got on use trinkets I've made a, a little macro here called Nuke. All this stuff together. This one is what you guys might want. And now again, if you're an orc, you're not going to bother with Blood Fury. You might use the, the troll racial or whichever racial is a DPS boost to you. If you're undead or so on, then you're not going to have one. But don't worry about it. So in this one, slash use 13. 
which is a trinket slot, slash use 14, which is the other trinket slot, use 10, which is my gloves. So we've activated all this at once, then we've used Blood Fury, then we've used Pillar of Frost to boost all that. So we've had Synapse Springs, Trinket Procs, Blood Fury, we've then boosted all our strength by 20%, and then we've raised a Ghoul at the end of it, and this is all in one press. Simple as. Watch. Look at all that. Blood Fury, Synapse Springs, Pillar of Frost, Ghoul is up. One press. Done. Absolute one press, and we have just gone raw. We have really just sacked our nuts out, and we have started to kick some ass. Okay, guys? And then you, by doing that, you're not wasting procs. You're not using them at the wrong time. You're not using cooldowns at the wrong time. They're all lining up together very nicely, so you can just watch your game and play nicely, okay? That's it for me. Take it easy, guys. We'll have a couple more guides coming up in the next... Well, very soon, actually. If you look out, you're going to see some more guys flying up. Now I'm back in the back in my own home. All right, take it easy. Any comments, leave them free. And uh, have a good day. Bye-bye.